Hi everyone, we're trying a video blog entry because we have a lot of visual material to cover this time. Uh, our topic for this entry is a punch force sensor, uh, which allows us to measure everything you need to know about a punch without putting any uh, nonsense on, on our hands. So there's two things you need to measure if you want to uh, really understand a punch. That is uh, momentum and energy. So momentum transfer uh, tells you how fast your opponent's head or body is going to move uh, after impact. And energy transfer uh, quantifies the structural damage done uh, at the location of impact, uh, such as bruising, broken bones, swelling, or pain. Uh, in order to measure each of these quantities, we need to know the velocity of the incoming punch as well as the effective mass behind the punch, uh, which includes any additional force applied after the moment of impact. So here we have the device, which consists of a metal plate connected to three piezoelectric transducers. Now, it might sound fancy, but a piezoelectric transducer is just a crystal that squeezes out electrons when you apply force to it and compress it. And those electrons will travel through these wires here uh, into our electronics over there. Um, now, when you stop applying the force, the crystal will, will decompress and it'll suck those electrons right back in. Uh, personally, I like to think about it uh, like a sponge, but for electrons. Uh, now, these crystals here are sensitive enough to pick up on the subtle changes in air pressure that come from sound waves, uh, but today we're going to punch them. The metal plate joining the piezoelectric elements is attached with a screw here, which is a horrible idea because it creates an uneven treatment across the surface. Uh, there are actually a large number of issues with this design that need to be fixed before it can be of any practical use, uh, but as a proof of concept it works, so that's fine for now. Another issue is that I did a decent job with soldering these two elements onto the base, but I screwed up a bit on this one and I didn't feel like going back and fixing it because I burnt the crap out of my index finger with a soldering iron. So when we punch the sensor, it sends a signal through these wires uh, to the breadboard, to the Arduino Uno unit, and then to the computer. Uh, the Arduino board is a nifty little piece of hardware uh, that allows a computer to communicate with the outside world. It's incredibly easy to program and it costs about 25 bucks on Amazon. Now the reason the breadboard is here is, is just because we need to protect the Arduino board. The Arduino is a delicate and sensitive instrument and it would fry immediately if we tried to uh, connect it directly to the sensor and just start pounding electrons into it with our fists. So the first line of defense for that board is a pair of diodes uh, here and here. Uh, so a diode is basically a one-way sign for a current because it allows for free flow in one direction but not the other. So this pair of diodes means uh, we can send a signal to the board, uh, but as soon as it's time to start sucking electrons back in, uh, we'll take those directly from the ground. Uh, our second line defense is a large parallel resistance. Uh, so here we have uh, directly to ground a 1K ohm resistance, uh, which is not that big. Uh, but in parallel to that, we have a 200K ohm resistance to the Arduino board. So whenever we do create electrons by punching those piezoelectric transducers, most of the current will actually just go directly to ground, and we will just get just enough to get a signal from in the Arduino unit. Once we get a signal in, we can plot a force curve, which tells us the force of a punch over time. Uh, if we sum up the entire curve times time uh, for the whole interval of the punch, uh, we get the momentum transfer. Uh, but in order to calculate the energy, we still need uh, the, to know the velocity of the punch. So fortunately, we can use another interesting property of piezoelectric transducers to get the velocity from the same curve. Since force and distance share a linear relationship in the operating range of the crystals, we can actually take the slope of the line up to the peak force and calibrate it uh, to give us the velocity. So is this a success as a proof of concept? Yes, this is a totally viable approach to punch quantification and evaluation. Now, does this sensor itself work well? No. I, honestly, I have to punch it about 10 times to get a good read, and then when I do get a good read, it's about 30% error rate. So the, the sensor itself needs to be redesigned and better built, but we'll have to visit that on another day. So thanks, everyone.